celebrate and to come down to my favourite butcher and family friend, Dave Hogan. We've been working with Dave for well over 15 years now. All the amazing meat needs in the restaurant all comes from Hogan himself, down here in Highton Industrial Estate. Dave, what we're going to be working with today? Well, I'm delighted you're here, and uh, we're going to talk about British lamb. How amazing does that look? And um, today, uh, we're going to talk about lamb shoulders. Uh, it's a great cut of meat. Um, it's seasonal. Uh, for 52 weeks of the year, this is available. And this particular shoulder, and this particular shoulder today, comes off these two lambs that are in our dry ager. This is a full shoulder of lamb. Probably too, too much for, um, for a family. But this can be split in any local butcher, uh, and there's plenty in Liverpool. They'd be delighted to help you out. It'd be, uh, be great if you could support them. Um, this would be split in two. And if we come over here, this is ideal as a family joint. It's a shoulder of lamb, and basically it's had the rack taken out of it. Now that is great just as one joint, but there's so much more that you can do with a shoulder of lamb. If we take that to one side, that can be a nice pot roast, but alternatively, we can split it. Now, that is a joint you could roast on your own, but it's also a joint that you could do, say for example, if you ever eat in a Greek restaurant, that is ideal for Kleftico Piston, which is a braised uh, Greek lamb dish. Google it, uh, try it, be a bit adventurous, it's fantastic. It's a slow roast for about, about four hours. What we've done on this side is that we've taken the lamb fillets off the shoulder. That is the lamb fillet there. So Dave, is this similar to something like a beef fillet of you know, quick cooking or is, again is this a slow cut of meat would you say? Well very much so and that's the beauty of the lamb shoulder. Uh, you've got the dish that you can braise for about four hours but this is lovely for a pan fry. Um, just saute it in the pan and it's so tender. So much so uh, an idea we could prepare it because it's ideal for kebabs. Oh wow. It's ideal for barbecue work. You can actually do it under the grill at home if the weather's a little bit inclement. Just remember when you get your sticks to soak them in water first. Great little tip there, Hogan. Okay. And do you sell these kebabs here in the shop? We sell hundreds. Guys, what a brilliant idea, I love that. Right, now this is the final little dish. Don't forget we've had the four hour braising job, could be Clectico Piston could be a nice pot roast. We've had the nice saute dish that we can do in the pan, or we could convert that into kebabs. But when we first started, and I showed you this shoulder of lamb, what I've taken off it is the neck. And this neck here makes the greatest soup you'll ever taste. Uh, it makes a lovely broth, uh, probably closer to home, uh, we know it as neck end, uh, neck end soup. Uh, but that in the pan with barley can make a lovely lamb and barley oh, broth. That sounds amazing, doesn't it? Or even getting your gravy ready for maybe a Sunday roast if you're doing a pot roast, you right. them all up. Yeah, well the bone, and they always say the men of the bone, the sweet of the meat, but that's where you get the uh, small amounts of marrow in there, and that's where the flavor is. It's all full of collagen as well, it's good for our, for our skin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know you better than me. You know <laughs> better than me. Um, but from one shoulder of lamb, you produced uh, a great roast, a nice little pan fry job, um, some kebabs, and a full pan of soup. So really, Dave, you know, from one cut, we could feed our families at least four meals throughout the week. If I came to you and said, Dave, can you cut, break me down this piece of lamb? 
I could get all of this from you and I could have kebabs one night, a nice yep. little lamb neck steak dinner the other, slow cook Sunday, yep. and a lovely broth the next. Well, on top of that, well, uh, sadly I hadn't forgotten uh, well, forgot to mention, um, the trim that's come off that little bit of shoulder, uh, the trim that's come off the neck gives you about um, a kilo of diced lamb. Wow. And again, uh, the amount of dishes you can make with that diced lamb, whether it be a curry, um, whether it be some sort of ragu, again, it's British lamb, it's probably the best lamb in the world. Um, give it a try. Amazing. Dave, one more question I've got for you. So the lamb we've got here now in the fridge, just explain to us a little bit how old this lamb is and also why it's in this dry aging fridge. What are we getting from having it in here? Right, well, um, lamb is very seasonal. Uh, and at this time of year, it's not the best time of year for lamb. And uh, you've probably heard already the term hoggets. Uh, these are actually hoggets, which is, is an older type of lamb. Uh, we're waiting for the new season lamb to come in, which will probably be in about four weeks time. But it's still really good eating quality. These will probably be about um, 10, 11, 12 months old. This is a dry aging fridge. Um, and it's different from wet aging. What happens is it takes the moisture out of the atmosphere, um, preserves the lamb uh, a little bit longer. We have salt blocks in the bottom of the fridge that just gives it that extra flavor. I think that? since this lockdown uh, has come about, we've become a little bit more adventurous. 100%. Uh, we've noticed that here in the unit when uh, the public come in, they're prepared to try anything. Uh, just remember, support your local butcher because you won't get this in any supermarket. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed that as much as I did and it just goes to show you, you can get so much from one cut of meat rather than just going to the supermarkets and buying tons of different cuts. So utilise one part and feed the family with lots of different recipes. Thanks for watching and Dave, thanks for having us. It's a pleasure.